Okay. So I'm going to discuss these two concepts with you, uh, which are called as temperament and goodness of fit. So uh, these are very two uh, important concepts used in psychology, basically to understand and to guide how parents should behave with their children and how can they basically help them. It's from that perspective. So because whenever you are trying to um, guide somebody or explain somebody, you are you come with a certain amount of uh, knowledge, with a certain amount of understanding for that particular thing. And it is true in case of parents and children as well. So what happens is if you don't understand these concepts, you would not be able to help your child. And similarly, it this same information you can backtrack in our future discussions also and how it can help you also and what happened in your childhood that should have happened some other way and how you can fix it, which is the part we will be taking up in future sessions. So uh, the first concept I want to talk about is temperament and the next concept is called as goodness of fit. So these are two concepts which can help parents understand their child's behavior and support their child's social and emotional development. So when a child is growing, he's not just growing through the grades in school. He or she is not growing just in, in, uh, in records like they got a B last time and this time they got A or probably they were all straight A's. That is not the only way for a child to develop in their childhood. They also develop socially. They also have to develop emotionally. So a, a child's temperament is his or her behavior style. So there's a, different, there, there's a difference in what is temperament. What is goodness of fit? How do you define it in context with or in contrast to temperament. There are subtle changes, but you will have to understand if you would want to help others, if you would want to help your child or would want to understand more about yourself. So understand that a child's temperament is her or her, his or her behavior, behavioral style. It is how children respond to their environment rather than why they do things. For example, some children persist with an activity and others are easily distracted. Some children respond very intensely and others respond very mildly to the same stimulus, which they get from that same environment. The concept of temperament is related to personality. Now, you, you should understand what is temperament and what is personality. Personality is perhaps best understood as a combination of the child's temperament and his or her experiences over time. So if you see somebody behaving it, behaving in a certain way, That is not temperament. That is personality. I'll explain more in detail uh, further. Well, we owe a good deal of our current understanding about temperament to this scientist called Dr. Alexander Thomas and Stella Chess. Their study was called as the New York Longitudinal Study. And it tracked a number of specific characteristics such as activity level, adaptability, mood, persistence, regularity, and intensity of response in typically developing children. Now, these two scientists, Thomas and Chess, recognized that about two-thirds of children fit into one of three specific temperaments. 
now it's not about being you know uh, uh, derogatory don't take it like that these are just three different styles three different styles of thinking of being that's it so the three specific temperaments were easy temperament people with easy temperament people with difficult temperament and people who are slow to warm up so easy difficult slow to warm up you can take that down in this order and the, there is a fourth category also which is called as the remaining one third of children showed a combination of these characteristics they were easy also they were difficult also and they were slow to warm up also so some professionals have questioned the way Uh, the use of these terms like easy and difficult or you know slow to warm up because they consider them as stigmatizing or probably racist in in terms of for a child but it is not like that it is from the perspective of understanding that what is it what kind of situation is the child in and how how is it affecting him or her and how he or she can be helped so anyways we can also talk we can also um, refer these three patterns of temperament as adaptable intense and slow to warm up okay to these three primary temperamental types so now let's talk about easy children or people who are adaptable so these children if you have to identify that what kind of a child he or she is you will say you will see that these children are generally positive and content these children adapt to change with little protesting they adapt they don't protest too much and these adaptable children usually have regular eating and sleeping habits so this is the first category now next in contrast is the intense children category or we also call them as difficult children now the these children are often active and easily frustrated they respond intensely to change or limits and have irregular eating and sleeping habits now slow to warm up children these are very cautious children they withdraw or react negatively to new situations they respond positively with repeated experiences only so now we know these three kind of temperamental types in children now understanding a child's temperament can help parents develop appropriate expectations for their child's behavior in certain situations they can adjust their parenting style and be much more effective as parents and their children will be less frustrated now let me give you an example about it if a preschooler has a slow to warm up temperament parents should expect that they will need to spend extra time helping their child adjust to a new school environment they will likely need to attend the school for part of the day for one or more days as the child adjusts and you would have seen that for so many of you haven't you seen that your parents used to come to your school when you were in you know very little and they used to you know come like early morning to drop you off in school and then probably come in between in two hours again just to feed you and then again <laughs> come back in 2 hours just to check up on you so they understood they, they knew that you are a slow to warm up child and you need some emotional support and there is a lot of study that has been made that uh, in cognitive behavior behavior in cbt or cognitive behavioral therapy that uh, a lot of problems that we as adults face could have been solved just by talking just by guiding or just by our parents being there for us 
well moving forward <laughs> similarly i'll give you another example <coughs> sorry Similarly, the child who has an intense temperament may show oppositional and aggressive behavior in preschool. Now, parents can help teachers understand the child's temperament as well. So the child can successfully adapt to the school environment. Now, if a child has an intense behavior, um, intense and aggressive behavior in school, you would how would you identify them as they are very active they easily get frustrated and they respond intensely to change or limits so how can these child be helped now these child can also be helped by parents or by teachers by being there for them to listen to them by being there to make them you know comfortable in their school environment now there is this other concept called goodness of fit goodness of fit refers to how well the child's temperament matches the parent's temperament <laughs> or even that of his teacher adults have specific behavioral styles or temperaments just like children just imagine a child with an intense temperament living with a parent who also is easily frustrated responds intensely to whatever the child has to say to them and follows an irregular schedule what do you think what kind of a fit is that that's a poor fit and it may result in many negative interactions in between the child and the parent and what will happen the child will become increasingly oppositional and aggressive the parent will need a good deal of support to modify his or her way of doing things so that the child can be successful it is very possible that the child is completely successful in one area but has very poor emotional and social hygiene that could have been rectified by changing this poor fit between parents and the child when they were little so it is very important for parents to understand what kind of a child do i have what kind of temperament do they have how can i help them flourish in their personalities now imagine that same child with the intense temperament have a parent who is flexible and has a positive mood the parents are always happy and have very high frustration tolerance now that is a good fit for the child a similar situation could occur at school also now imagine again the intense child who has a low frustration tolerance paired with a no nonsense rigid teacher what do you think what kind of fit is that it's a poor fit a much a much better fit would be a teacher who is adaptable and willing to help the child develop problem solving skills so the child can get some of what he wants and also follow through with the demands of the school so you understand that how important it is for a person to understand this concept of temperament goodness of fit and personality so today we learned what is temperament we learned what is goodness of fit we learned how can we help the child develop how can we support them a child social and emotional development what is easy what is difficult and what is slow to warm up temperament 
now we understood the concept of temperament is related to personality and personality is understood as a combination of child's temperament and his or her experiences over time you understand it this way so temperament like child is a child is a you can say that a child child is born with a certain temperament like the certain way of behaving towards things but how he responds to his or her environment develops his personality and how a child's personality and temperament can be helped is through this concept of goodness of fit if a child is easy if a child is difficult or if a child is slow to warm up we also understood that how can we understand if a child is adaptable or easy or is an intense child or a difficult child or is a slow to warm up child so these are very important concepts i hope they help you i hope you can reflect back as to what kind of childhood experiences you have had and how they changed you or how they help you form a certain kind of personality the way it is and what you can do to work upon it or to come out of it and now now you have knowledge right to understand the kind of personalities you might have had in your childhood or your child is having in him or her so you can help and you can also try to help yourself with this knowledge so i hope this information was good we will elaborate more on this concept uh later in our future sessions but today probably you can uh think about how you can process this information and uh, look around yourself try to apply it so let me type this information like what in personality so basically personality yeah yeah so personality develops depending on how the child reacts to his or her environment and how the child reacts to his or her environment would depend on what kind or what kind of a temperament the child carries is he or she easy difficult or slow to warm up or rather you can say if he or she is adaptable an intense child or slow to warm up child so an easy child when you will look at that e how will you identify that this child a is an easy or an adaptable child you will also you will always see that child is always positive full of life and content that child is adaptable to changes with little protesting and then usually have regular eating and sleeping habits now how will you identify an intense child they are often very active child it's not that adaptable children are not active but adaptable children are positive and adapt they adapt themselves to the change very easily but an intense child is often active and easily gets frustrated they will respond to intense situations very badly they will respond to a situation only within a certain limit in which they feel comfortable and have very regular eating and sleeping habits and slow to warm up child they are very cautious they will not let anybody come to them that easily or they will not open up to people except for a couple of few in their you know close proximity they will withdraw or react negatively to situations they are quite pessimistic for everything around them and they will respond 
positively only and only with repeated experiences with someone remember that these are cautious child they don't warm up very easily sure any time heidi so it's very important and we learn these three temperament temperament personality and goodness of it very important concepts i will discuss more and try to give you more examples next time but today i leave you with these concepts and with this information to go back to yourself and think that in case you want to think about yourself then how, how what kind of a parent you are vis-a-vis -vis your child what kind of a child do you have because it's very important for you to know yourself and your child both ways it it happens both ways a transaction never is successful if it is uni directional or you know it just goes one way no it has to be both ways if you are behaving as a parent in a certain way why is it that probably it, it's it's your child who is a problem or maybe it could be other way around too maybe you are a problem and don't look at yourself in a negative way look at it as an opportunity with this information that yes i know this is something that i can work upon this is something that i can help my child or help myself with there's no there is um <laughs> there is no gain in being pessimistic there is no gain in being angry frustrated or rude it is possible for you to be all these things at one point of time or at a certain point of time because we are all humans it is acceptable but when this temperament of yours becomes a static thing and when it becomes your personality then it is bad just not for the people around you but for yourself as well so don't let that happen if you if you know in your hearts like take a, a like in the beginning of these sessions i said uh, bring a diary bring a diary and just every day when we meet here we are going to write like you know summary of our day in probably 50 or 100 words every day and we will try to write everything how we are feeling today how we felt today how we would want to feel instead so that after 30 days when we meet you will have a journal in which you can look back and see and identify the good points and the bad points about yourself and you don't have to show it to anybody you don't have to discuss it with anybody but just this information that you will have about you is going to be so much helpful it's going to be so liberating because now you know that you are a bad person <laughs> okay i am a bad person i'm going to work upon it because it's hurting me instead right you you i mean what's the point in hurting yourself how many years are we going to live if we really 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 take care of yours 100 years 200 years so what's the point of being something bad what's the point of being something in the category of being called as a pessimist you know what's the point of being in the category of difficult people there's no no point it's okay if you are not like that it's okay if you are like that but knowing that it is hurting you this way and there are ways in which you can help yourself is really liberating and to i mean and i will not mince my words in saying it is okay to be pessimistic no it is not okay to be pessimistic because first thing first you are hurting yourself there's nothing to be pessimistic about and don't think anybody is god on this earth because nobody is nobody even knows anything about this concept of god except for the feeling that we get when we pray or when we think about god right so what is god i mean god is just being good to everybody to others i mean even to yourself 
we have discussed about it so so much and uh, in my previous 30 day challenge uh, for better sleep we used to do meditation we used to talk about bhav we did samakhya philosophy in which we spoke about eight different traits which of which four are bad traits negative traits and four are good traits and how having good traits and how not having bad traits help you become a better person and a much more calmer personality but that was a huge topic and we discussed it at length so next time when we start with with another challenge i i can explain you the whole samakhya philosophy the whole yogic philosophy basis which all the psychology and stuff is made today and how it has helped people if you and we dis, and there are a lot of people i can see who are a part of that um, 30 day challenge and they really uh, like enjoyed it and they really told me that how it has helped them improve themselves so uh, yeah i know there's so many of you and i'm so glad that i have been able to help you and take you to a journey i uh, because uh, see let's do it together like today whatever uh, age we are we are growing going to just grow older from whatever however old we are today right so let's see how it goes ahead and keep meeting each other keep holding each other accountable keep learning from each other and keep being nice to each other and uh, just <laughs> wellness counseling curriculum where people are required to go to school to earn credits to learn about what makes their heart things so this is helpful for this oh amazing and it's not that um, okay so um, see if you are able to help what is a mother do they basically are able to help and nourish a person a little person around them you know emotionally socially you know in in terms of their curriculum or in terms of their grades you it's it's a very it's not a skewed concept being a mother is not a skewed concept you are doing this with so many so many other little children so this concept is definitely going to help you and um, uh, and one thing uh, as i said before also life is too short don't think too much and there is nothing sacrosanct in life there everything is changeable everything can be changed for better everything can be changed for bad as well but we have to be on the good side just remember not for somebody else but for yourself so forget everything whatever stage you are whatever place you are that is the start of something new something good always remember that and just move on and it's no big deal for anything in life it's no big deal it's just people who uh, make it a big deal we we like the other day we were having this discussion and um, there's some very funny came up and then uh, i guess i said that we we are adults right we all know that the world is not a fair place and to even think about it as a fair place is like you know demeaning ourselves so don't demean yourself no go with this knowledge that the world is not a fair place but you should be a fair person for yourself you should be you should try to be fair with everybody around you you don't have to be god but you you have to try to be fair and this the it's very bad to be bad to anybody honestly it's very bad and um, on this part i will never mince my words so just be positive do good to everybody just let go whatever they do that is their karma you are not bothered about what they are doing what they are not doing <laughs> you just be bothered about yourself they will do whatever they have to do right they they are not going to change themselves for you so you also don't change for them and just live your life the best revenge is to be happy to live your life i'm just 
kidding in that sense but yeah just be happy be positive live your life it's very short life uh, we don't know who is going to meet each other tomorrow we don't know right so just leave with a good impact on others <laughs> there's no point in being bad either to yourself or to others so don't hurt yourself and Heidi, I really hope that this information works out for you. And please keep sharing your experiences, everybody. Heidi and Sibs, thank you for waiting. Sibs and Heidi and so many people are here. Okay, let me see. Grazia, thank you for dropping in. And uh, Sue Dawson. And I'm not able to get all the messages, but yeah. And everybody else, who who all are, who you guys, everybody, thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing your experiences and telling me what you are thinking and participating in this discussion and uh, monologue. <laughs> okay, take care, you guys, and I hope to see you guys again. I'm not having a session tomorrow, but uh, day after we will meet again and continue with our list. I uh, really urge you to uh, get a diary, a small diary, uh, like as we discussed in the beginning of these uh, sessions, like on the first day of this challenge, and write at least 50 to 100 words of how you are feeling today and why you are feeling today and what you could have done to feel better. So take care, everybody, and just be happy. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, Heidi. Bye, everybody. Sibs, Grazia, Sue Dawson, everybody else, if I'm missing. Bye.